And uh, today's topic is dynamic exchanges. So very welcome, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here again. And I think you will all uh, be very interested in this topic. Uh, I have it in my strategy book, by the way, uh, dynamic exchanges. It's one of the sections about exchanges. It's one of the most uh, intriguing uh, topics within exchanges. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. So before that, before speaking about dynamic exchanges, that let's do some warm up. This uh, very nice game, Moses Young with white and the younger uh, Van Forest brother with black, Lucas Van Forest. Let's see if you can see how Moses Young continued here with the white pieces. All right. Let's see if you can get this right. I think I'll just quiz you for the next uh, three moves. I think that will be enough. All right. So one minute thirty. What do you think white should play here? Oh, you have finished my book. Yeah, nice, uh, Gidil. I'm happy to hear that. All right. Yeah, that's a great effort. So please take your time, guys. Take your time. Um, no crazy stuff. We're speaking strategy today. All right. Uh, so uh, today's topic, dynamic exchanges. But this is our warm-up, okay? This is our warm-up. All right. Titan Chess, Amazon, Santos, you basically got it right. Eric got the perfect solution, what the grandmaster played. But OK, fair to say, uh, Titan Chess and Amazon and Santos, uh, that's uh, also probably winning. So uh, an excellent choice. I see what you mean, Giri, tactical magician, Medina Tiger. But since we are speaking about trades today, are you sure that you want to trade that night for the Black Knight? Awesome Owen and Chess Samurai, I don't understand this uh, tactical variation, Knight XF7. I don't understand this. Uh, you must see something that uh, that I cannot see. Okay, we'll talk about that. Charles Hua and Hong Pao, you want to swap the... How did you get there? Oh, in the third move. I understand. Yeah, half a point for you. At least uh, you got the first part right. Aha. Uh -huh. So... Okay, I did chess. I, I see the point. So we have only one winner here. Only Eric uh, got this one right. So let's first listen to Eric, okay? And then we will look at the other options. Let's see how to continue with white. Please go ahead, Eric. What's your move here? Um, I played knight g3 here because the knight on e4 is like black's only good piece on the board right now. That's right. My knight is not that good. So I played knight g3. And then nice. Please go ahead. Uh -huh. Now I can trade off this knight if he goes back. I guess I have like knight f5 and like yeah, definitely. This knight's not good anymore. No, so, not really. Aha. Uh -huh. And if, so if he goes, if he takes, and then I can do queen takes, and now I might have like some kind of attack on like the g7 pawn, and now my knight's really good, and he his pieces are just not that good. Anymore. That's right. Yeah, black pieces. Most of them are actually in very bad places. Yeah. Thanks, Eric. That's an excellent analysis of, of this position. So if we look at this from the very beginning, uh, if we don't uh, look into tactics and so on too much, if we just check the minor pieces here, we make a little list of the white minor pieces and the black uh, minor pieces. We can clearly see that probably white's worst piece, just like Eric is saying, is this knight on e2. I mean, it's the most passive piece, right? While on the other hand, from black's three pieces, we can safely say that this knight is out of place. No, the knight on b8 is far away from the action. And uh, the bishop is so-so. But this knight is, for, of course, the strongest piece. So some people are saying, for example, knight c4. I understand the idea. It's a tactical move and so on. You can see that the pawn is somehow overloaded here. But probably black can take, and they are happy to swap off that knight. They'll move the bishop somewhere. I don't know. Is there some tactic here? or <coughs> Sorry, can I just move my bishop uh, somewhere. I don't know. I, I don't see the tactic. You don't have mate here still, right? Because the knight is not joining. So bishop d6, maybe rook c8. Correct me if I'm wrong, if there is some cheap tactics that, that I can see. Um, the black knight is carrying the team like that one Chinese guy in your Fortnite team. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's a good uh, metaphor. Yeah, this knight is the only good piece. And uh, actually, we didn't talk about this, but we have an open file also, right? So positions with an open file, we have this in the Petrov. I think this is some kind of Petrov. We have it in the Exchange Slav. There might be an open C file and so on, and in many other openings. Uh, such positions, the open file holds tremendous importance. It's just that here we don't see it so clearly because there are so much people on the E file, so to speak. 
So going back to this position, knight g3, very simple move, very strong. Try to eliminate black's only good piece here, the strongest of his three minor pieces or the most active one. f5, what would you play in that case, uh, Eric, if I try to support my knight? You wouldn't take it, right? You still have the pawn, Eric, so you can just uh, play out the moves, if you like. Okay, Amazin said f3, exactly. That's what I think also. Uh, by the way, here we have a dynamic exchange in, uh, in, a, in action. Knight takes e4, this would be a dynamic exchange, but for black. Dynamic exchange, in my definition, is when we exchange pieces in a way which modifies the pawn structure. Exactly, nice arrows, uh, Eric, exactly what I was saying. Aha, uh -huh. so uh, here basically we're speaking about the plane exchange, so to speak. White would like to swap off the knights. It doesn't matter really on which squares this happens. But of course, it's fortunate for us to swap them on g3 because our queen, like Eric was saying, is now directed at the black king. But basically, we're happy to swap the knights on any possible square. We just want to get rid of these two pieces. It's uh, favoring us. Uh, okay, I'll make the chat private if you continue that uh, conversation, okay? I don't like the fact that you're sidetracking everyone with that uh, talk in the, in the chat. So I'll keep an eye on the chat. And if you continue, I'll just uh, make it private. So you can always chat with me. And for sure, with me, you won't uh, speak about Fortnite or, or, or whatever. With me, it's only chess, right? So careful there. Knight g3 was played in the game. We had uh, several people who got this one right. Knight takes, queen takes g3. We can also see some tactical issue with the knight on b8. Black uh, played at this point. Um, what did they play in the game? I don't uh, really remember anymore. They played rook a8. Yeah, they have very badly placed pieces. Yeah, thanks, a tactical magician. So their pieces are badly placed. They are not really fighting for the open file. So here a lot of people were saying bishop h6, which, which I think is a good move also. If bishop f6, there is something going on here. I don't know if there is knight e4, but okay, maybe black can play bishop takes d4. So, well, unless somebody can see some flashy move here, some rookie five stuff, but I don't believe that. Um, we should play like in the game. So, Eric, we're back with you again. What did, uh, oh, sorry. What did you play after uh, knight, rook a8? Um, I played uh, knight g4 because this move just like, it opens the rook. And also now you have like knight h6 or maybe bishop h6. Bishop e5, and yeah. Aha, a lot of things, sure. right, going on. Yeah. That, that's right. So, knight g4, actually, black is helpless here. It's 1-0 it's already. There is no way they can save this game. Uh, in the game, they played uh, queen d8, and the white found a flashy sacrifice here. Um, all right, just for fun, no? Just for fun. Would you like to, everybody, would you like to play this out? Uh, if you play this in the right way, you will end up mating. Uh, black. So this is not about strategy anymore. It's it's about tactics. All right. I'll just give you one minute because you, I know you're so good with tactics. So one minute. Let's see if you can finish black off here by some tactical fireworks. All right. Please get the move order right. Um, oh, I see. HDI chess and tactical magician. You win. What do you win there? You win something. I'll play queen d8 on that, right? Or queen g5 maybe. Well, queen d8 safest. No? So who gets close closest here? Um, oh, yeah, you can also play it the other way around. Yeah, right. Uh, Charles Santos, Amazon, Titan Chess, ID Chess, uh, Quacky. You can also play it that way. Just that the Grandmaster played it in the other move order. And I can only show you one move order here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So Chess Samurai, you got it, uh, basically. Right. Aha. Uh, Hong Pao, nice idea also. Yeah, many ways to win here probably. Many roads lead to Rome. But uh, okay, let's see if we can do it the way the uh, Armenian Grandmaster did it in the game. So Min Svengs, you were also very close. But uh, aha, you're right, uh, Titan Chess. You can also play like that uh, if you like. So Chess Amurai, please go for it. Uh, play it out your way. Okay, so I'm gonna go rook e7 first. Um, knight just first ball also works, but okay. Yeah, it's the same thing, right? Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh huh. That's right. So we can also see here we have so much people attacking, and black has no defenders, only the queen, but that's not enough here. 
Aha. Please go ahead, uh, Chess Samurai. Let's finish this off. Aha. Like we're saying, today, by the way, Sweden won their soccer game 1 0 against Czech Republic. So it's a great day for my country. And this looks a little like soccer, I would say. We have so many attackers and there are so few defenders. So it's just game over here. Please continue, Chess Samurai. All right, we can win here in many ways, uh, but uh, the nicest one is the one that... Okay, please adjust your variation, Chess Samurai, at this point, if you can. There are many ways to win, but uh, let's do it the most pretty way, all right? Um, you played Bishop E5, which is also winning, of course. Uh, well, if you play that, maybe I can... Well, I mean, F6, yeah, F6 yeah, everything wins, probably, but... Uh, so... Oh, but sure, 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 success, yes, yes. Exactly. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Pretty mating uh, picture, right? So this is the cleanest move. You can also win by bishop e5, of course, but f6, you can go and take my queen and so on. But it's nicer what you played in the game, bishop f6. And uh, yeah, you, we can see here mate is coming up. This is how the game ended. So pretty uh, finish, no? Pretty finish of this game. Um, yeah, as you like, uh, Chess Samurai. In the game, they mate it here, but it's also possible to mate there. So... Nice. Thanks, Chess Samurai. Why did I bring up this example? Because I simply wanted to show you a case where a trade of pieces is favorable to us, no matter where it's affected on the board. In this case, white is very much favored by swapping off black's strong knight. That's why we play knight g3. I know you had many different moves here. Knight takes f7 was even suggested here, but let's just stick to, to the strategical part, right? Uh, unless somebody would like to discuss this move. I, I don't understand it really. Oh, I understand you want to take here, but yeah, we're completely out of the track here, right? I can take on F2 and I don't know what's going on. Yeah, that, that's, that has nothing to do with the position. I don't think perhaps Movsesian, he didn't even consider this. No, he was focused on his plan. He saw that, like uh, Eric was saying, black species are far away from the king and the king's side and so on. So let's attack knight g3, let's swap off that knight and let's go for an attack. Actually, black is completely helpless here. There is no way they can stop this turn attack. Knight g3, knight g6, can he do that, says Titan Chess. Yeah, interesting idea. Knight g3, knight d6. Okay, I have a feeling that something will happen on h5. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this looks uh, dangerous for black. You, you can see the picture here, right? If I go there, the knight will come here, very strong square, of course. But uh, also, if it goes the other way, I think I would like to play knight h5. I haven't calculated a single variation here, but I can see some ideas like bishop h6, queen g3, and so on. Uh, this must be difficult for black also. So, yeah. Who knows? Maybe that was a better try after all, uh, 96. Yeah, maybe this was a better try. But to, to our interest, mainly this situation. We swapped our knights and we benefit from this. It was a great trade for us. All our pieces are now very active and they don't have that strong knight anymore. All right. Let me show you a similar example from a game in the in a very popular Karo Khan variation you will immediately see which variation does this come from. One of the most intriguing variations, I would say, right now, this uh, e takes f6. When I was a kid, nobody would play the Karo Khan that way. But ever, ever since then, computers like it very much for black. And I think that's why it became so popular. So here we have one example in this game between Savchenko and Oparin. So white, at this moment, played the move knight f4, all right? White played, yeah, you can see this move h5. That's the new trend. I mean, that's how this variation changed. Thanks to this move h5, black is suddenly doing very well. In the past, they wouldn't play like that. All right, knight f4 was played. I would like to know how would you guys continue here with the black pieces, all right? Um, I will just ask you for three moves, all right? I'll give you one minute, 15. Aha. So here we go. Please think first. Evaluate the position, make that little list, make the little list of the minor pieces of each side, make a list of whites, three minor pieces, which is the strongest one and so on. Do the same thing with black, please. And I'm pretty sure you will find the right way here for black. So please do me that favor, compare black's minor pieces, all right? Compare them. That would be very useful. All right, Santos, Carlos, and Tori Chess. I'm not convinced by that uh, variation that you are saying. I'm not convinced by that. I'll let you know very soon why, why I don't think it's the best choice. I like much more what Strategic Simber and Eric are saying. Um, the Grandmaster didn't put the rook there. You can think, where did he put it instead, if you like? 
uh, what else? Medina Tiger, yeah, but you're hanging in the exchange, right? So, oh, you have some tactics coming up. I understand. Yeah, maybe. Maybe Medina Tiger. Maybe I can give back the exchange on D3, though. Aha. Uh -huh. So, um, Greg Shahadi and Mega Charles Rex. Here we have our two winners. That's great. Uh, anyone, by the way, if you like this kind of position, maybe you should have a look into this Karokan ETX F6. It's, it has become so popular and uh, it seems really promising. Yeah, I'm surprised. Uh, that was not the case back in, back in my teenage uh, days. Aha, uh -huh, but nowadays it's very popular. All right, uh, Mega Charles Rex, uh, let's give preference to the kids. Uh, Greg can join us when he's the only one who who gets the right answer. So please go ahead, uh, Mega Charles Rex. What do you play here? Bishop takes F4. Um, <laughs> oh, Greg wanted to talk, but we can uh, include you later on, Greg. Do you have a microphone, Mega Charles Rex? Can you explain with words? Why is this move good? Why, why did you take on F4? Why don't you play A4 straight away? Many people were saying this. Why don't we just get going with our attack? After all, wise king is there and we should attack it, right? Uh, I didn't want to play for first because I was afraid if knight takes d5, then you won't have really an attack. That's right. Good uh, way of thinking. I'll swap that bishop, which is very important in our attack. Let's say black takes with the queen, for example. Um, I think white can now reroute this bishop, right? Uh, Mega Charles Rex. I'll give you the white pieces also. What bishop do you think, d3. white? Exactly, bishop d3. We don't care about this pawn, by the way. We, we're interested in improving our position. Now the bishop can come here. Please notice that this bishop is very nice when white is castled short. There are even primitive ideas like queen d6 in this system I have seen. You attacked on h2 and you provoke g3 and so on. Here, however, the bishop is not so not that powerful, right? Because the king is sitting on the other side. So actually, it's the other bishop which is very important for black. So please go ahead, uh, Mega Charles Rex. Sorry, I interrupted you. Please go ahead. How did you continue here? I first took, so then All right. um, I would keep it. And uh -huh. then... Uh, uh, I'll just play rook a and a4. And exactly, and a4 is coming next move. There is not really much white can do about this. In the game, they played f3. Um, I don't know if there are any be better options. So, please go ahead. Yeah, you, a4. That's how the game went. Uh, what happened in the game? Well, b takes a4, rook e7, pretty move by your party. By the way, this was a blitz game, but even so, he played very, very well. Very strong player. Bishop e4, four, four, rook e a7, improving our pieces. We talked about this some other session. And uh, yeah, he just played in a very natural way, 96. That's why I like looking at blitz games sometimes. The play is so intuitive. Uh, of course, uh, Stockfish said that Rook takes a four was also fine. But uh, I like the human way, 96 and later on Black. Uh, yeah, Black just crashed through here, crashed through on the queen side. So yeah, what is this about? Basically, we make our little list here. These three pieces, it's clear that this bishop is the strongest one. We should keep that bishop on the board. So after knight f4, we should take it. Uh, for some of us, this looks a little uh, anti-natural somehow. I don't know why to give up the bishop pair like that. But it doesn't matter. After all, this is an attacking position, right? We have opposite castle king, so we should just get going with our attack. That's why we should keep this bishop. If they play in the same way as we saw in the previous variation, um, yeah, who knows? Maybe we can just go a4 and will open up the game anyway. I don't know. If somebody with a sharp tactical eye, can you see some good variation here? Maybe we can take and bring in the queen. There is some bishop before also. Safe to say this bishop is much more useful than, than the other bishop. So that's why I wanted to show you this example, just to see how we can compare our pieces and we can make a conclusion that, okay, this guy should stay and that other bishop, it should probably go so that our strongest piece will stay on the board. All right, so this is mainly about exchanges in general, try to keep our active pieces. I call this active exchanges, by the way, in my book. Anyway, today's topic is a different one. And uh, now we are done with the warm-up. So uh, we're almost done with the warm-up. I have one last example uh, in the warm-up. Let's see here. We will traveled back in time to the 1990s, I think. One of the world's best players here, uh, Anand, and Kamsky, of course, also a very, very strong player. Kamsky has just played queen a5. That was not a good decision by Kamsky. Why is that? Well, uh, let me know how you would continue with the white pieces here. All right, one minute. You might have come across this in some book. 
why was queen a5 a bad move? You're right, chess samurai, titan chess. You know your classics, I can see. I would say classics because these are games from the 1990s. These are already classics for me. Okay, great work, Hong Pao, Mega Charles, Rex, Greg Shahadi, Eric, 2008, Medina Tiger. You got it all right. But meanwhile, you're waiting for the rest. Think of the move that you played. Uh, did it matter on which square you carried out this exchange operation? Would you be happy about that trade on any square or it should be on exactly that square? Think about that. Meanwhile, we're waiting for the rest. All right. Does the square matter where the exchange or the trade is carried out? Think about that, please. I get the point, the quacky and the uh, strategic simmer, but that's exactly what we're speaking about, the square. Yeah, thanks, Chess Samurai. You pasted it to the chat so everybody can see. <laughs> You're ruining the fun here. Anyway, uh, Medina Tiger, please go ahead. How did uh, you continue here? Black had played Queen A5. They're probably preparing to go B5. So what did Medina Tiger play? You don't have a microphone. It doesn't matter. Yeah, just play out the moves. Yeah, no, no worry. Get the microphone for next time. Queen B6. This is what I was saying. It's in itself. It's not a very good trade. It's not that white is dying to swap queens in the open Sicilian. Usually we want to keep the queens, right? We would like to play something like G4, G5. Maybe we would like to play E5. Sometimes we can even go F5 and so on. But we rarely look for the exchange of queens. But of course, Anand uh, understood this very quickly that black's next move here is b5. So the square matters, exactly. The square matters a lot. Uh, yeah, we cannot swap it here, by the way. This is not working. I could play b5 if I'm very lazy, but uh, I could also just take this pawn, I guess. And I don't think, I'm not sure we have enough uh, compensation here. Uh, d5 maybe next turn. However, uh, swapping the queens on b6, it will leave black in a very passive position. They're not able to play b5 anymore. Queen takes, uh, bishop takes. 97 is not working, right, uh, Medina Tiger? Uh, again, tactics uh, at the service of strategy. If it wasn't for this move, I guess all of this would have flawed, right? If the bishop goes back, black would play b5, and I think they have just a normal Sicilian battle here. Uh, however, bishop c7 wins a pawn. There's no way they can defend it. So in the game, Kamsky played 98, and Anand played in very impressive fashion. He played e5, I, I, I think, to further... Uh, complicate black's development and uh, yeah, I think it was something like d5, f5 or, or he played bishop g4 first there were some subtleties here, maybe it was this move first, yeah, or, or something like that anyway, so that's what happened in this uh, in this game, a brilliant move, queen b6 by the way, please notice if you play something like e5, black can take and they can put the knight on d7 and they're actually okay in this position, the pawn is a little weak there is some idea like bishop c5 also if you play g4, just like in any good Sicilian, black has no reason to play in the defensive way. They can just go for counterattack, right? Something like this looks nice for black. So in general, are queen swaps good for white? I don't think so, Titan Chess. In my opinion, queen trades are good for black in the Sicilian, in the open Sicilian. But okay, it depends which Sicilian. If you have a pawn on c4, then you have a Maroxi bind. Then suddenly I think the queen trades are excellent for white but not in this structure. I don't think it's a good idea to trade. When do you see a trade? In the Taiman of Sicilian, right? Titan chess, you can see this queen g3 trade. But then we're speaking a dynamic trade because queen takes, they take with the h-pawn and they open up the h-pawn. So that's what dynamic uh, trades are about. So this is, in my opinion, it's not a dynamic trade, really. You're not modifying the pawn structure. However, uh, it matters that you do it on b6 so that you restrict black's uh, movements. So. Yeah, that's the last example about trades. However, in this case, the trade itself was not really useful. What was useful for us was to trade the queens on uh, b6, right? That was the important thing here, not to let them play b5. So it's more about restriction than about trades, really. But OK, I wanted to show you that example. We are ready now. We are ready to look into our topic of today. This is enough about trades in general. Now we will speak about dynamic exchanges, all right? So this is a wide area. We have a lot of examples. Uh, we'll do some parts today, and the next time we will have a look at the rest. So back to the good old days, Nan Gelfand. I was a teenager when this game uh, came around. A very famous game back in those days. Nan played very, very well, and he was able to win this game 
in very pretty fashion. So, all right, you're playing with the white pieces here. I'll only give you one minute for this. All right, how would you continue with white here? Uh, Santos, I think you're... Oh, I understand, you're trying to trap my queen. Aha, uh -huh. I see what you mean, Santos. I'll take back and I'll play knight x e4 when you play bishop f4, all right? Interesting idea by Titan Chess. I guess I'll take it and I'll play knight. Uh, I'll take it with a knight and I'll put the knight on f4 maybe, all right? On f4, I think I'll put it. Uh, so, Chess Samurai, you got it. Uh, Greg Sahadi, you played it in the other way. I don't know. We will have to ask uh, Nan about this. Um, it's an interesting idea. Okay, Wacky Hill, you got it also. Great work. Eric, you were very close again. Uh, you're definitely on the right track. Tactical Magician, that third move looks a little risky, don't you think? You're helping me to improve my post structure. A lot of people were on the right uh, track here. Means thanks also. Yeah, a lot of people uh, got it uh, almost right. So, Wacky Hill, please uh, go ahead. How do you continue? Aha, that's right. Bishop takes e6. Why do we play like this? I don't know. If you have a microphone, you can let everybody know Wacky Hill. Uh, else, uh, maybe you can use the arrows uh, or the uh, markers on this great chessable board. Well, I don't get any reply from Wacky Hill, but uh, I guess what Wacky Hill would like to say here is that we have now managed to ruin Black's pawn structure. So that's one important facet of dynamic exchanges. Please notice that the trade itself, bishop for knight, it's hardly any useful for white, but this is a very uh, good square to, to perform this trade because now black has weaknesses. Please continue, Wacky Hill. All right, so we're targeting the pawn on e6. Black must defend it somehow. It's not so easy in the game they played rook a6. The rook now defends the pawn, but on the other hand, the Eighth rank. Okay, Wacky Hill, you have to get the microphone then. So how can we exploit now the fact that Black does not control the eighth rank anymore? Yeah, we'll talk about that, Titan Chess. Don't worry, we'll go step by step. Rook D1, exactly. That's how Grandmaster Nan continued. Now Queen D8 is coming up. Uh, because in that way we can use our Rook in very active uh, fashion. In the game, let's see what did Black play in the game. They played H6. And the rest is simple, I think, for Wacky Hill. Please continue, Wacky Hill. Just follow your instincts here. So here we're speaking tactics. The first move that all of us looks at is, oh, Bishop Knight of Three. All right. You can probably play like that also. I thought you was going to say Bishop C5, which is also interesting. However, to make a long story short, uh, Nan played here the very technical move, Rook B8. Believe me, this is the best move what he played. It's about trades again. He would like to trade off that bishop because he's exerting pressure at White's camp. And after that, the Black's position was in ruins. Now you can see they have so many weaknesses. In incredible, no? How the, how the picture changed in so few moves. So, yeah, thanks, uh, Wacky Hill. Uh, great work, great work. Just for the record, no, I was saying to you that these bishops, uh, th this bishop and this knight in itself were not interested in this trade. And uh, actually, if I just put that very same position here, if I just remove these pieces, I think I can do it, do it here, right? I can just remove these two pieces. If I put that position instead, if I arrange that position, actually, white doesn't have a big advantage here. Um, it's a boring position for white. It's a bad trade. You see what I mean? We're missing this bishop now, right? Just so that you understand the picture. The trade itself is not that good, but it's on the square on which it's uh, affected. That's what matters here. So, okay, let's check the other options. Let's go back again. Hold on, guys. Let's see here if I can bring this up again. All right, so here we are. Uh, some people are saying Bishop D5. Interesting, that's a dynamic uh, trade because dynamic exchange, we're trying to create a pass pawn on the D file. I think I'll take and I'll play Knight F4. All right, happy to hear anyone's comments here. How would you would continue with white? Uh, what about Knight G5? Yeah, that's what Greg said also, right? Uh, knight g5, interesting move. I guess I'll take, I have to take, right? Because you have a lot of pressure, so I'll take. And uh, I guess this, this one is uh, poisoned, right? I should not take it, else 
you wouldn't have played like that, right? This is psychology. What I can also say is that this knight is not a good piece anymore. It's not doing anything. So I should try to simply uh, arrange my pieces here. Well, what, where to put my queen, for example? Queen, queen d8. May I trade queens or is something bad happening to me here? Uh, please let me know. d6, knight g2. What is that? That's another variation, right? Well, what's the knight doing on g6? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know either. This looks okay for black. I mean, ra rapid, uh, fast uh, glance. This looks okay for black. Rook is coming to c8. This knight is not doing anything. Uh, so black should not be in big trouble here. You have to look out for moves like that, but I can't see how that's going to work. Queen e2 sets means lengths. All right, I'll play rook c8 then. Um, how can this be so bad for black? I don't think it's so bad for black, honestly. I don't see any big troubles here. Rook d1, okay, means lengths. We're playing a blitz game here. I'll play queen, queen e7, queen c7, queen b6. I don't know where to put that queen. Oh, I should probably look after that square, right? Queen, I don't know. Queen e8, maybe, targeting that pawn also. Does that make sense? If you play bishop e5, maybe your bishop is not so active anymore. Queen takes the 8 wins. When, when does queen takes the 8 win? Here? Really? How, how can you make that win? I don't follow. Bishop takes f6, says Wacky Hill. Oh, you're going to take the... I understand. Nice tactics. I can see you're very awake. Nice. All right. I get the point. But never say never, no? Don't forget you have a lousy knight on g3. Now it's my turn. Let's see. Should I give the check first or should I play rook d2? Anyone. Should we give check or should we put the rook instantly on d2? Rook d1 first. All right. If you say so. I, I, I don't know. I have mixed feelings because the knight is so bad, but... I guess it makes sense to tie it, no? Uh, and then rook b1. This cannot be clear, right? Black is very active here. Rook b5. Wacky Hill is now defending white side. Okay. If I play materialistic move bishop d8, protecting the pawn, what happens? Greedy. Yeah, exactly, Greg. I think that's the way to play here. They say in the endgame, pawns are more important. Uh, they are more valuable. So we should probably protect those pawns. Yeah, greedy but good. Yeah, I don't like this for uh, for white. Looks very passive. I think none wouldn't have agreed on playing this position. So we can discuss this on some other occasion, right? I have some more examples to, to show you. This is very interesting, but uh, if you compare this to what none played in the game, bishop takes and knight g5, I think we have to agree that this is much cleaner, right? Um, it's difficult for black to, to defend in this position. These are typical weaknesses now. That's because we affected this very nice dynamic trade on e6. Um, after all, this is something that you learn when you're beginners, right? Maybe you've played some Italian game where you put the bishop on g4, then you play knight e4, some, you know, beginner's game. Knight takes a three, g takes a three, bishop takes three, and you mate them with g, queen g5, queen g2. Actually, it's about the same topic. You damage their pawn strike. So this is a very important part of, of uh, trades in general, I would say. Can we check bishop d5 deeper, says Titan says, Really? What's... Uh, oh, no, sorry. It was not like that. I'll take with a knight. I'll play knight f4. Uh, yeah, double pawns with beginner mode. Exactly. So d6 says tight and chess. Yeah, this, this is easy to look at when you can move the pieces. Remember that none couldn't do that in his game, right? But okay, I, I get the point. You're uh, betting on your past pawn. You don't care that something might happen over here. Highly unpractical to play like this, but okay. Uh, somebody said knight xd2. Yeah, I don't want to play knight xd2. I, I would like to attack that pawn instead. Could I play knight e5 maybe? That's a nice bishop pair, by the way. So what do you have here? D d7, I'll play queen... Queen d6, maybe? Knight e4, c5. Oh, oh. okay, well, I'll take. Okay, I'll take. Let's do... Oh, no, I can't. Oh, I'm very unfortunate this is not working because... Yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> All right, so maybe 95 is not correct then, okay? What else can we play? I mean, I understand we can take on f3 also, but I didn't want to swap that bishop here. The bad knight is good. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, I don't have a clue, actually, what's going on here. Knight xd2, no, I don't understand that move. If I just put the queen on d8 so as to control that pawn, what happens? Or, or that's a bad idea. You just play d7 then, you, right? Yeah, I'm lost here in tactics. I don't know what's going on. I like knight e5, though. Queen d8, rook c7. Oh, so rook c7 is also coming. Wow, maybe you have refuted uh, Nan's uh, 
beautiful game. What a pity, no? It didn't survive. How did this start? Yeah, it started in this. Oh, F5 was proposed here. Interesting move. But I think Rook C7 is coming. Uh, some sacrifice there also. Uh, okay, sorry, Greg asks, how did this start? Yeah, it started like this. And uh, instead of uh, Nan's uh, technical solution, we have some people who would like to play Bishop D5, which is actually a dynamic trade because we're trying to make this pawn a passport. So maybe we should ignore this with black, right? Should we just ignore it somehow? Yeah, but I don't know how to how to ignore it. Um, I'm not sure. How, how can we do that? Maybe Rook A6 says Wokey Hill. Rook A6, the Rook is coming to D6. Yeah, maybe. Okay, I don't know if is something hanging there or no. No, we can probably just take, right? A little scary, scary when you don't have control of the last rank, but uh, it seems to work, right? Black is alive. Yeah. Uh, somebody had a question. Uh, Wacky Hill, what's your question? I hope it's re related to this example. <laughs> okay, we don't have any uh, information from Wacky Hill. The tactical Magician, Bishop d5, Knight takes d5. We're back at this again. Didn't we conclude that Black was in trouble? Bishop takes f3. All right. They'll just take, I guess. Now I think uh, it's getting worse. No? Queen b7. But they'll trade. Speaking trades again, right? They'll trade this guy. It's not uh, useful for. But to take back, and I can play something like knight e4. I think this looks ugly for black. Yeah, this is not what we want. Fantastic pass pawn. So actually, I'm happy that you suggested this, uh, whoever it was, bishop d5. It's, a, it's actually a very interesting move also to, to create the pass pawn. On the default. So another example of dynamic uh, exchanges. I was going to talk about this later. Uh, right now, I was focusing on how we can destroy our opponent's uh, pawn structure. So Rook A6 was Wacky Hill's last call in this interesting position. All right. Let's see something more recent. Uh, let's see something more recent from another kind of... Wait, at the starting position, can you take on E6, 10, on E5? Yeah, somebody said this, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I think this doesn't work. I understand the idea. You want to play bishop f4 here. That's the idea. But I think I can ignore the knight and I can take on e4, right? I think this is what black would play. No, but this is not the... Is this the position, really? Yeah, it's like this, right? Knight takes e4 and black can take back on... How would they take back here? Take on e5, maybe, right? Something like this. Knight c5, rook t6, maybe. Um... Uh, no, play queen takes e5, bishop f4, and then play knight takes e4. Really? Eric says, queen takes e5, bishop f4, knight takes e4. But then I have queen d8, Eric. I'm afraid you're losing your queen here. So, yeah, you can't play like that. Uh, interesting idea. Yeah, interesting idea. Knight takes, how was it? Bishop takes and knight takes. But again, please notice it's easier for us because we move the pieces. Tactical magician is raising uh, their hand. Uh, what happened to tactical magician? You want to say something? That was from before. Okay. Yeah, I don't follow here uh, really. I think black is okay um, somehow. Yeah, the rook is on a a8, right? What happened? This was very confusing. I think something. We made a mistake. Yeah, this is the variation exactly. So you can just take on e4 exactly. That's I think what I told you. Anyone? Yeah, something happened. Some re residual problem on the on the board. Yeah, and black is perfectly fine, of course. So. Yeah, that doesn't work, right? Okay, guys, uh, main takeaway here. <laughs> please, uh, once we start looking at variations, we never stop, it seems. But please uh, see the bottom line here. Fix those weaknesses. And by the way, very, very pretty move, Rook D1, trading queens and bring the game into the technical phase. Well, these weaknesses, for sure, they will be more heav heavily felt once we're in the end game. Is there an engine on here? I don't know. I try to avoid the engines when we're here uh, at the USCS, because I think we learn more at Chess Dojo also. We learn more if we turn off the engine. When you turn on the engine, usually you turn off your brain also. So I would prefer to keep it in this way, all right? But if anyone is very, very curious, maybe you can plug in your engine. But uh, yeah, I would uh, avoid that if, if possible. All right, let's uh, move on. Let's see an example from another uh, generation and another pawn structure. So. This game was played in the United States. With white, we have Nizhnik and playing black, Alonso Zapata. 
Here it's white to play. I don't think the first move is very difficult for you guys, but I'll ask you for the rest, okay? You have one minute. Yeah, engine can, can tell us very quickly, but do we learn from that Titan Chess? It will tell us, but what did we learn? Uh, copy and paste from the engine, maybe. All right, well, how to continue with white here? Titan Chess, you got it. That's exactly what the Ukrainian Grandmaster played. Remember today's topic, dynamic trades, all right? Then dynamic exchanges. Giri, you got it also, great work. I get the point, uh, Eric, uh, Amazin and Santos. I think I'll play knight. Where do I put my knight there? Knight f6, maybe, Eric. Knight f6, you have a problem piece there, right? Okay, we'll come to that, we'll come to that. Okay, Titan Chess, Girir, and Wacky Hill, you got it. That's right. Greg Shahadi got it also. Mean Sphinx, Strategic Simmer, a lot of people got it. Nice. You know your strategy. Excellent. So, Girir, you were one of the fastest ones. Please go ahead. How do you continue here with white pieces? Aha! That is sometimes a forbidden move, right? Going back to beginner's chess. We are taught that if you have a fianchetto bishop, you shouldn't swap it. But of course, here it's different. There are not queens on the board anymore. We're already in the end game, almost. So here it's actually a very good trade because in this way, we fix the post structure. Aha, no queens or no danger, says Titan Chess. Please go ahead, Girir. It's your move, next move. So that's the, the whole point, right? Just to make this clear to everyone, this square was not protected. Now, if we play knight c5, they could play something like knight e4 and perhaps b6 later on, right? But since we take first on c6, um, in this case, we are creating a weak pawn, but more importantly, we're creating a very nice square for our knight. So that's how the game went. Black played knight f6. Now the knight is in the air, so there is only one way we can protect it. Before we continue with the game, it's very impressive, this game. It's very nice, uh, this game. But uh, before we continue, let's have a look at what other people were saying. So some people were saying rook d6. I have the suspicion that... You didn't notice that this uh, knight was hanging, but I might be wrong because I'll play knight f6 here. I, I looked at this, I think, and I'll play something like knight e4. I doubt that you would like to take the pawn. Um, or would you take the pawn? Well, you, you're not afraid of anything, so probably you would just take the pawn and move your rook somewhere, right? Aha, so rook c7. Maybe this way you're okay here with white. I don't know. I, I understand that... Uh, Nuznik didn't want to venture on this. Maybe it's okay for white to play like this. Um, knight c3, take on a4. Yeah, that's only one option, no? Because also this knight is far away from the action. Maybe you can play like that. You're right, Titan Chess. Yeah, we can give this check. We can take on a4. We can maybe play rook c8. And uh, this pawn is uh, weak. Yeah. So rook c1. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Bishop a6 seems to be coming also, right? Or rook c5, very technical move. Okay, Wacky Hill, if you prefer that. I, I just play this lazy move. Maybe even this one. W what do you think, guys? Is this too clever? Bishop d5, I'm targeting that pawn also. Yeah, white is in trouble, definitely. White's, white got a pawn, but they're in big trouble. So th let's not overdo this. Bishop takes a6, brilliant decision by white. We're, not, we're in the end game now, no dangers for the king. We would like to fix the pawn structure in a favorable way. Now we have a very strong knight on c5, which cannot be easily dislodged. Of course, we also have the open file in our hands. That's, a, that's an important factor here. So let's have a look very quickly at what happened in the game. Uh, white, uh, I mean, black play knight f6. We must defend with king g2. What about knight e3, says uh, Mean Sphinx. Yeah, if you play knight e3, I guess this is just a bad endgame for black. Many weaknesses. Now I think rook d6 looks nice. We can bring in the other rook. Uh, white has many weaknesses to work on here. I think black will be suffer suffering here for, for a long time. These double pawns, after all, they're not so so bad for white. Uh, by the way, there was a famous game, Smyslov Tal, where Smyslov did exactly the same thing. Bishop takes e6. If you're good with chess history, you can probably look up uh, that game. Very famous game. Uh, Smyslov won in a beautiful fashion. One of the best endgame players ever, by the way. Uh, Titan Chess says... We actually want Black's pawn to be on c6 to block the bishop. It's similar to Benoni line. Yeah, bishop takes c3 in, the, in some lines in the Benoni and the King's Indian. Exactly, you're right. Same topic. We're happy that the pawn is there uh, because they cannot use the... I see what you mean. There is a famous, uh, also, tile game, I think, where he takes on c3 in the King's Indian. 
White has double pawns, so he can never put his bishop on this diagonal. It's a famous game. Tal, Tim and Tal, I think it is. Uh, but okay, you can check it in, for example, in John Watson's uh, book here about uh, oh, um, strategy, a very nice uh, book about uh, modern chess strategy. Bishop takes e3, surprising trade in the king's India. All right, uh, back to business here. Bishop takes e6, b takes e6. What happened in the game? Well, we just saw this, knight c5, knight f6, king g2. We must cover the knight. Bishop f5, uh, f3, rook d8, knight f2. White is simply evolving here, improving their pieces. Knight e7, of course, black can trade the knight on c5. But uh, what will happen next? Uh, Anyone, what do you think will happen next? Uh, write in the chat, please. What do you think will happen next? Which pieces would we like to keep and which pieces would go? Knight fe4 is, protect is uh, suggested in the chat. Interesting. But, oh, I see what you mean. You, you're going to take on d7. Is that so? But then I can play rook. Well, I have this up here also. What does that mean? I think I have this move, right? Yeah, what Titan Chess says, I think it's much more natural. Aha. And that's what the grand was to play. Exactly. We just swap everything and we bring another knight to c5. We don't even have to calculate. Who knows the time situation on the clock? So he just took on, the, on d7. Yeah, much more practical. Rook takes d7. We could have traded and, and played a knight to d3, but white played first here the move e6. And then he did exactly that. He just took, he brought in the knight uh, attacking the pawn. And we could have played knight c5, but strong players always keep such moves in the pocket until it's really necessary. So rook d1 is interesting, but uh, now we're back in our previous topic, pawn play. So what did white play here, anyone? Speaking exactly, title says pawn play. We should attack them where they're weakest, right? The king is safeguarding th on this side. So no reason definitely to play f4. But a3 is very strong because here black had huge difficulties defending everything. And again, like we saw from the very beginning, the square on c5 is very nice for our knight. So I would say some kind of modern classic. White went on to win this game. Not a very famous game, but it reminds me of that nice Smyslov tile game. And uh, yeah, basically the same ideas we take on c6. Not that the trade itself favors us, but it favors us to swap the knight exactly on c6 so that we can put a very nice knight on c5. All right, let's see something else. Uh, this is very simple. No, this is very simple. Now let's see some slightly more complex stuff, all right? Let's see some more double-edged uh, examples. Well, at least the next one is, is rather double-edged. Let's have a look at this game. Uh, two of the strongest uh, female players, uh, Mekurtian with white and Batsyashvili with the black pieces. Here you're playing with the black pieces. I would like to know how you would continue in this uh, complex position. How can you get a clear advantage with the black pieces? All right, I'll just quiz you for... Uh, three moves, all right? How do you think Batsyashvili really got a big advantage here with the black pieces? Remember, today's topic, dynamic exchanges. All right. We have several ideas here. Um, Titan Chess, you got it. Yeah, exactly. Santos, you play like in the game, which is also meritorious, of course, if you play like in the game. Aha. Uh -huh. um, Tactical magician, you also play like in the game, which is fine. But actually, Titan Chess got the most powerful continuation here. Oh, knight e6. Some people want to trade knights there. Interesting. Yeah, maybe you can do that also. Uh, but don't forget today's topic, dynamic exchanges. We're trying to swap pieces on specific squares, which will modify the pawn structure to our favor. That's what we're speaking about. All right? Um, so let's listen to Titan Chess. How do you continue? Aha, we have a comment here by Titan. It's a bad sign when one has moved all his pawns up, then he is overextended and probably your position will get dismembered. Aha, uh -huh. interesting, yeah. Let's continue, rook takes e3. We are helping white to join, to uh, have their pawns united, but at the same time, please notice that new weaknesses appeared here. So this pawn is targeted, that pawn is still a little weak, that pawn is also uh, a little weak, it's difficult now for white to defend everything at the same time. For example, if a move like 
rookie one, I guess we can take on D3 somehow, right? We can probably take on D3. With what would we take on D3, by the way? With the bishop, I think, right? To keep the strong knight. And uh, they have issues here, right? They have issues. If bishop takes knight takes, they cannot take because it's hanging on G3 also, right? Queen D2 says, uh, Rocky Hill. Oh, can you play like that? Uh, maybe, but I think you will still have an issue with this pawn, right? If I play something like, oh, knight E4. Okay, okay. Good move. Yeah, probably knight E4. Knight takes D3 says Rocky Hill. But then I can probably... I can take on D3 then, right? Or is this crazy? I think this works, right? You take, I take, and I take, and you have a problem with the bishop, right? So, yeah. Uh, rook takes E3 was played in the game. Pawn takes. It's, it looks kind of... Uh, Counterintuitive, right? Because you're saying, okay, we have a stronghold on d4. Uh, when we take, they don't have this problem anymore. But actually, it's a good trade. It's a good trade. Mainly because also h5 and h4 were, were included. So they're, they're having more weaknesses. If you just play something like queen d4, I can play rook e1 and I'm defending here. I can take with a rook or perhaps even with a pawn now that the queen is attacked. But this is much stronger because they have so many weaknesses to, to think about, right? Uh, so let's continue. Yeah, White played in the game for this reason. They played Queen E1. So what was your move here, Titan Chess? Who was? Yeah, Titan Chess. What did you play here? Exactly. We're speaking about weaknesses, right? So many weak pawns. Now I understand your comment. Uh, uh, who, who said this with overextended? Yeah, all the pawns have moved. So there are so many things to look after. I remember this from my... Um, hedgehog games. This sometimes happens. So when there are a few pieces left, it's difficult to keep track of all these weaknesses. So at this point, queen b2, the pawn is attacked. And uh, I think in the game, Batsias really didn't play like this because she didn't like the move queen before. But actually, black is winning here. I think I'll quiz you on this one, okay? I'll quiz everyone, everybody on this. It's actually also about a dynamic uh, trade, but okay. Uh, apart from that, it's uh, more about tactics, of course. So let's see if you can make uh, your conclusions here. So black to play and win. Yeah, and stop uh, silly talk in the chat, please. All right. Stick to the subject. Stick to dynamic exchanges. Don't play that uh, awesome Owen. I think you're hanging your queen, right? Titan chess, you got it. Great work. Amazin, I'll play rook d2 on that move, I think. All right, Wacky Hill and Santos, you got it. Great work. Power to the past pawn. That's what this is about. This was a blitz game, by the way. I think I know where white, uh, where black uh, got confused. Uh, I wouldn't make this definitely in the blitz game either. Um, there is a complex move there. Uh, tactical magician, mega charge, rex, strategic, similar, and kugel chess. You can probably play like that, and you will be better. But uh, that is something much better than your move. Believe me, there is something much better. So we have four winners here: Titan Chess, Wacky Hill, Santos, and RZ 2018. All right. Santos, go for it. How do you finish off white here? Aha, we trade them before in a way. Their pawns are not together, but we're creating a very dangerous passed pawn. I think that in this blitz game, black noticed the move rook b1, and they said, okay, this is not so easy to win because they are keeping the passed pawn at bay. But here comes a very strong move by Santos. All right, Santos, please go ahead. Exactly. So now a3 cannot be prevented, right? Some people are saying 92. I understand this is probably also good enough for uh, for an advantage. I'll play rook a1, and uh, I guess if you take, I can probably survive in that rook and game. Maybe you could play b5 and so on. Oh, rook a8. Yeah, maybe you could play like that. All right. Is this winning also? Uh, that's entirely possible. You have a very strong pass code, so all right. Uh, half a point, then you can award yourself half a point. But I like more the solution uh, provided by Santos. Rook a8, and there is no way white can physically deal with that passed pawn. It's impossible. I gave this variation, and uh, Santos simply pushed the pawn and went on to win here. Yeah, power to the passed pawns. So that's basically what this example is about. White had played rook e1, black had to make a choice here, 
it looked natural just to keep the pawn at bay like that, uh, play something like queen d4, but white can probably defend there. This was much stronger. White had big troubles defending all their weaknesses here. You can play something like king f2, of course, but still there will be problems problems coming up here. Bishop d4, maybe some rook e8 and so on. So, yeah. Swapping pieces and creating weaknesses in the opponent's camp. My next example, I think it will be very simple for you guys, but it doesn't matter. Uh, sometimes we can learn from repeating also, uh, like a chessable, right? Typical chessable philosophy. We learn by repeating, we see the patterns in a cl more clear way. All right, some technical issue here. Please give me one moment. I'll paste the game again, all right? Let's see. No, I don't have a virus. No, no problem. It's my mistake. It's nothing about the format of the games. All right. I think most of you guys can see which uh, opening does this come from. Very young Etienne Bacrot back in the 1990s. His opponent, Gallego, has just played the move h5. I would like to know how you would continue here with the white pieces. What did very young Etienne Bacrot play at this point? All right. Only one minute because it's so uh, simple. All right. Tactical magician. Bye-bye. See you next time. Okay, Girir, I'll give you half a point for that. Uh, your move is a little impatient. I'll play queen e6 on that, all right? Uh, by the way, before you solve this, look at your pieces, please. Make that little list of your minor pieces. Try to establish uh, from white's minor pieces uh, which is the most active one and so on, the most useful one and, and so on. That will help your decision-making, okay? So Waki Hero Kwaki, that's basically the right choice. Uh, I agree with what you say. Charles Hua, your solution is also interesting. Uh-huh. Um, oh, a lot of people want to push that pawn. Maybe you were influenced by some other example we looked at today, pushing the past pawn. But I'm not sure you should do that. Okay, but if Greg Shahadi did it, well, we should probably have a look again. Uh-huh. All right. We will check that. Oh, I cannot play Queen E6, can I? Well, we'll see. We'll see. Um <laughs> All right, uh, Greg, no problem. Greg was running out of time. Yeah, I know one minute is it's very little time. Strategic Simmer, you found a nice plan, but you're hanging the E4 pawn, aren't you? Or is that intentional? Anyway, let's uh, speak with somebody who said knight P6 on move two, like uh, Pando. All right, uh, Pando, you're on. What would you play here? Yeah, bishop takes e5, exactly. So please notice carefully here. When we trade on e5, we improve our pawn structure. It's not only about us, it's also about them. When they take on e5, it's horrible news for the bishop on g7 and also for the rook and the queen on the e file. So in itself, the trade is very good on e5. But apart from that, perhaps the trade is not that great for for white. Uh, usually you don't... If you play just some random move and you let black trade, it's not... That good for white. I mean, usually in the Benoni, black is happy to trade a few pieces. However, trading on e5 is excellent for us because their pawn structure is uh, ruined and we get the passed pawn. However, should we, should we trade with the bishop or with the knight? Well, if we take with the knight, we can, of course, do that. But we could argue also that the knight on c4 is much more powerful than the bishop on h2. So that's why we should probably take it this way because we have a very strong blockading knight on C4. All right, please go ahead, uh, Pando. Which was your next move here? Aha, so knight b6, it's a good move because after rook d8, you can just play like Bakrot did in the game. He played here the move a5. Very patient play, right? Uh, by the young grandmaster at that time. A very good move, a5, gaining space on the king side, queen side, freezing the pawn structure, and so on. In the game, he actually started with a5, and then there was rook d8 and knight b6. Now, the big question, why didn't he play d6? Well, I suppose that black would play queen e6, but you'll probably say to me that knight b6 is winning material because you're threatening bishop c4 and also you're threatening my rook. Is that the sad truth, then? I don't have any way to defend you, right? Yeah, you're right, probably. So black would have to play queen d8 instead. So why did it Bakrot play like this? Maybe, just maybe, he felt that black would get some counterplay with bishop uh, e6 and uh, 
try to, I don't know, what? Okay, but swapping is horrible. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. If you said D6, probably that's fine also. Yeah, that's probably a good move also. But he played in a very patient way in this game. Uh, he started with a5, and then he played knight b6. Um, unfortunately for black, there is no real counterplay on the king side. There is no real counterplay. I would like to, to continue a few more moves. h takes g4. So how do you think we should take back on g4, anyone? Why not knight b6, rook a8, a5? Yeah, that's what he played. Yeah, it's the same thing. He could have played knight b6 first. I have no idea why he started with a5. Maybe he wanted to keep his knight uh, on this active place, uh, something like that. Uh, definitely he wanted to, to prevent uh, b5. But, okay, good question by... Uh, um, yeah, thanks, uh, Min uh, ni Nice to see you. See you next time. Maybe rook b8. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have a good answer to that. All right? The difference between these two moves or move orders. Anyway, black took on g4. How should we take on uh, g4, anyone? Speaking about trades, how should we take? Exactly, Giril. We should take with the bishop. That's right, Titan Chess. Because after all, this bishop, if we compare again our three pieces, we can probably conclude that the bishop is the most passive one. Usually in the Veroni, this is actually not, not a great piece for white. They're happy to swap it off somehow. There is a knight d2 variation, for example, when you swap it for the bishop on g4. Anyway, bishop takes g4, that's what played in the game. Um, no, sorry, that's a different variation. No, it's the same variation. Bishop takes g4. H takes g4. Now you can see what's happening here, right? White is swapping the pieces in a way in which black will be left with a bad bishop, so to speak, on g7. But anyway, let's have a look at what, what happened. Knight e7. White is happy to trade that knight. Just like in the other example, the Nuznik example, they have another knight that they can use to bring to c4 and e3. So many juicy squares for this knight. Queen takes d7 and queen f3. All right? So this is how the game went. But now, please remember what we saw from the very beginning. White played bishop takes e5, right? I made a little experiment about this position. So I'll show you what my experiment is about. I used this position, but I made one little adjustment here. All right? I'll show you. You see what happened? I just put the e pawn back on d6. So what do you think about this position now? Let's say we hadn't traded on e5. Aha, it's about equal. That's right, Wacky Hill. Black has no big problems here. I think, Wacky Hill, you can even uh, suggest a move for black here, right? One move for black to consider here. What might that be? Yeah, black bishop open diagonal. Exactly, Gilead. We could play something like bishop e5. You see the difference, right? This is a different story. I'm not claiming that black is better, but for sure they can defend here. This is a very nice bishop. Maybe they can go king g7, rook h8. I'm not sure that the bishop is worse than the knight. I don't think so. It looks powerful in the center. So once you see this, you understand that it wasn't so much about trading this or that piece. It was about trading it on a specific square. In this case, Bakrod was very happy to swap. Uh, can I bring back the game? Let's see. Uh, he was very happy to swap the bishop on, yeah, here it is, on e5, right? So that black's pawn structure is deteriorated, right? So that's what happened in the game. Very quickly, what happened in this game? They played a5 first, but knight b6 was also fine, we concluded. Rook d8, knight b6, pawn takes. We had a very important moment here. Take with the bishop, please. Get rid of that bad bishop or not so great bishop. Takes, takes, knight d7, knight takes. We're very happy that this pawn is on e5. Queen f3 was played. And it's funny that you and me, we were expecting white to finish off the game on the queen side, right? Okay, he played knight a4. But suddenly, Bakrot notices that actually he can decide the game on the king side. All right? So having said that, uh, anyone, what do you think white played here? They could have played automatic move knight b6 and knight c4, but they didn't. Aha, they went for an attack, king g2. Interesting, no? We're speaking so much about strategy, and suddenly white will win this game by means of an outright attack. Yeah, chess, is, chess works in mysterious ways, right? Black is doomed. Rook h1 coming, b5, desperation here. And you could have taken on b6, but uh, Bakrot found a pretty combination. I have to quiz you on this one, right? I must quiz you on this one. Let's see who, who has the most brilliant tactical eye here, if you can find the whole... Variation, all right.
Oh, you can play it straight away. Mega Charles Rex, Rocky Hill, Greg Shahadi. I didn't notice that. Oh, maybe you can. What if I play Bishop... Uh, where to put that Bishop? Oh, Rook H8 even. Wow. No, but you're, you're blundering the G4 pawn, aren't you? Or what am I missing here? You're blundering the pawn on G4. Uh, no, but... Uh, Mega Charles Rex, Waki and Greg, you're okay. Uh huh. I can see what you mean. I can see what you mean now. Well, that must be winning, right? What if I play Bishop F8? Can I play like that? Oof. Looks very difficult for Black. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, awesome Owen, also, you found this move. Yeah, nobody plays like the Grandmaster. So. What happened here? Yeah, this was uh, many years ago. Aha. Nobody played like the Grandmasters. Uh, you, you prefer a more flashy way to play here. Aha, interesting. All right, so what happened here? Uh, <laughs> nobody played the move he played. Interesting. So, Rook H8, if you play that, it won't work, right? Don't do that because I can take here with check. On the other hand, if you play Rook H7, like uh, Mega Charles, Rex, Wacky Hill, Greg Shahadi, and Awesome Owen, I think that's fine. I guess he didn't like Bishop F8. Might that be the case? And if Rook H1, Bishop G7. But White should be completely winning here, of course. Uh, maybe you can even play something like Queen H3. Yeah. So I don't know, I don't know. No, but we don't have to redo the quiz. You found a better option. Yeah, that's probably even better what you play. Um, in the game he played, no, he didn't play Queen H3. In that case, Black can probably play Bishop F6. I guess there are a million ways to win here, by the way. But I like the way that he played. He took on C5, seeing that if uh, Bishop takes C5, let's see if I got this right. Bishop takes C5, uh, White will just win by Queen F6, and it doesn't matter that. They take here, right? It's going to be mate anyway. So that's what he played in the game. But okay, I'm not saying this is better than what you what you said. But it's pretty. All right. So next move, pretty move. Uh, I don't dare to quiz this again because there might be more solutions. Anyway, what do you think White played? Pretty move. Queen h3. Is that a pretty move? Uh, Bishop f6 maybe. Rook h7. That's a pretty move, but I don't know if it's a good move. If you play queen h Rook at seven, I can play queen g6, right? You're not mating me here, are you? Yeah, 96, uh, Wacky Hill, you got it. Okay, I mean, we can argue about this, but uh, yeah. You're probably winning here anyway, right? You're probably winning here somehow. But uh, yeah, completely unnecessary not to play this. Maybe you're winning, maybe you're not, but it, it's, it makes no sense to play like that. It's much simpler what Wacky Hill is saying. Rex Hadi also, 96, exactly. So please, uh, Greg, please uh, play it out. Let's uh, give the pawn to Greg Shahadi, who will show us how to finish off black here. Very pretty combination. Piece of cake for Greg, of course, but for all the rest of us, it's interesting to see how white wins this game. Nice, right? Nice. You must be familiar with this topic from the Sicilian Dragon, for example. You can find that topic, that Im image. I think it's very pretty. That's how the game uh, ended. Uh -huh. So back to what we looked at here, you can also see how strategy and tactics, they can be sometimes kind of intertwined. Uh, black played h5, white hurry to take on e5, but with a bishop because they knew that this knight was very strong. Typical topic in the Benoni, right? And after that, it was difficult for black to even move in this position. Please notice this pretty idea by Bakrot to take with the bishop, get rid of the passive bishop. And as we can see here, the pawn structure is very much in their favor. But they didn't play d6, right? They didn't play this move d6, which we were waiting for. Um, all right, maybe we can do one last example, okay? Let's look at a completely different pawn structure. Uh, completely different kind of, uh, of pawn structure. I think this would be our last example for today. Oh, Amazon is raising his hand. Would you like to comment on anything, Amazon? Um, we're all ears. Please go ahead. No? All right. So I'll continue. Let's have a look at our last example for today. This is also from the good old days. This game was played with white Ostojic and playing black 
legendary Dutch Grandmaster Jan Timman. So in this game, White has just played, I think, the move knight e5. I would like to know how you guys would react with the black pieces. So here we go. I'll ask you for a little variation. Let's see if you can figure this out. I don't think it's very difficult, but uh, still I think it's instructive. All right. Here we go. Black to play and get some slight advantage, okay? Interesting idea, Titan Chess. Maybe I can take and play Knight F3, right? Um, I get the point to Giri and Hank, but maybe I can ruin your pawn structure a little now, don't you think? Uh, Santos and Kugel Chess, are you sure you should put the pawn there? I think it will be in danger, that pawn, after Knight F3 or maybe Rook D1. Okay, we can talk about that. All right, so who is closest here? Strategic Simmer, you were definitely closest on this one. Uh -huh. You got it right. Um, maybe your last move is okay also. Tima didn't play that way, but uh, looks uh, nice to me. Tori Chess, you got the whole variation. Congratulations. Great work in the footsteps of Jan Timan, who was, uh, I think, number three in the world at his best moments after... Kasparov and Karpo back in the 1980s. Yeah, very, very strong player. I was happy to play against him a few times. I learned a lot from those games. Uh, <laughs> when I go to Serbia and playing in a GM mix, do you have any recommendation on how to get norms? Well, my only recommendation is to prepare for your games, uh, play well, and uh, yeah, uh, rest a lot, right? And, and stay in physical shape. That would be my... Main recommendations. Uh -huh. But just play and have fun, and sooner or later uh, your level will increase and you will get those norms. So don't. Uh, I can remember myself back in those uh, norm hunting days. Uh, don't get too obsessed with I have to make one point out of two and so on. Just play, and sooner or later the norms will come. Don't, uh, don't worry. All right. Titan Chess says, uh, I wanted to trade a bishop for one of Black's knight, because if the pawn is on e5, dominates the bishop on e7. Yeah, sounds interesting. Um, all right, let's listen to Tori Chess, because Tori Chess got everything right. So please go ahead, Tori Chess. Knight takes e5. It's very important to play this before white plays knight takes e6. Some people are saying d takes e4. Maybe you were preparing to take next turn, but then I can take on c4. On c6, sorry. And actually here, I would take with a knight, I think. We will have some kind of situation with mutual weaknesses. I'm not sure that black has, has much here, really. Uh, this knight is uh, rather active, and if you take... I think I'll take with the queen, and I'll just pile up my pieces on the c file. This should be at least equal for white. So, Torices has a much stronger idea. Take immediately on e5. Now, if I take with the queen, Torices, this is not really good for me, right? What would you play, for example? Typical... A hanging pawns situation. This time, if I take with the knight, it's different, right? Tori Chess would have no reason to take. Well, I mean, it's possible, certainly, but it's also possible just to put the knight on, on d5, I guess. And it, this would be a very nice isolated queen's pawn position. Horrible bishop on b2. So let's say I take with a, a pawn instead of the Tori Chess. So how would you continue? For example, what about these pawns, uh, Tori Chess? Yeah, exactly. Rook c8, starting to uh, attack those pawns. Yeah, your moves are not very difficult. Just uh, play by intuition. Exactly. Bishop f6, targeting the pawn. And uh, I guess you will bring in the other pieces also. And you will have a slight advantage there. Uh, exactly, queen e7. I think I would put the queen on d7, though, because I would like to put the rook on d8 and attack this pawn. They cannot move this knight because... The pawn is hanging. But okay, queen e7 should also be okay. I guess you're about to play queen before or something like that. What about knight a4, says Wacky Hill? Yeah, I think you're right, w uh, Wacky Hill. Knight a4 is also interesting to, to, to attack this uh, bishop. You're right. That's perhaps even stronger because if the bishop moves, there might be bishop. Uh, maybe I can play like this, Wacky Hill, don't you think? Yeah, bye, Girir. Uh, nice to see you. See you next time. So maybe like that, right? And I can... Maybe, maybe this is better for white. I don't know. I, I somehow feel that actually... It's better to keep the knight on the board. This bishop is kind of loose anyway. 
Anyway, so uh, yeah, Torichess is explaining here that Black should take on e5 quickly. Uh, in the game they took with e the pawn instead. Please continue, Torichess. How does this continue? Pawn takes e4. And here we can see taking with the pawn is horrible. In the game they took with a knight. And uh, after that, White's main problem here. Yeah, again, this would be just horrible for White to have so many weaknesses. Queen takes e4. Uh, Black simply played the rook c8, bringing the rook to the... Action, queen d2 was proposed by somebody uh, who said that. Strategic Silver said queen d2. Looks very nice, also queen d2. I don't know what, black, what black would, white would play here. Maybe they can play bishop c1 and reroute the bishop. I think that's maybe what white should play, right? Reroute the bishop, because the bishop is very passive on b2. So rook c8 was very nice move by Torichess. White played queen e4. And your last move here, Torichess, queen b6. Exactly. So what we can see here is that Maybe you will say that, okay, what did black gain from this? The power structure is not so much in their favor. But look carefully. You can see that with these bishops on the board, definitely this structure is nice for black. You can come across this structure in different openings, like the Sicilian Alapin and so on. Um, this is awkward for white, an awkward position for white. Also, black is happy to keep the queens on. White's king might be in some danger. Later on, it's a small advantage, but it was enough for... Uh, for Timan to win this game, they played in the game rook ac1, there followed bishop c5. Yeah, white's bishop is worse than the black bishop anyway. You're right. That's maybe why this knight a4 perhaps was not so uh, useful after all. The game went like this, bishop c5 targeting the pawn on f2. After rook c2, black could just play rook d8 and white cannot play rook fc1, I think, because there is a cheap tactic here. Anyone? Is there a cheap tactic for black? Of course, Titan Chester, Teddy Simba, you see these things in a millisecond. <laughs> Bishop takes, Rook takes, and it ends with a typical back rank motive. So not so easy for, uh, for black, for white. Maybe a computer can hold this with white, but for most humans, it will be complex to play this. Rook c4, Rook d8, Timan, he took his time here. Rook c6, g3, Rook d5. Slowly, he went on to win this game. You can see that you can even cook up something maybe on the on the king side at some point but in the end they are very happy here they can press white they can torture white for a long time here the bishop safe to say it's better than the bishop so basically it's a simple example no it's a simple example but i think yet instructive uh, we shouldn't let them take because in that case we're sitting with a slight uh, weakness it's better to uh, for us to take right on e5 and then as we could see here white is uh, slightly struggling in this structure so if you thought this was simple you should see the statistics. Actually, most people didn't play in this way. You played other things. Some people are saying here the move d4. I think this is contrary to the nature of this position. You shouldn't play like this. Now my bishop is strong. I can play something like rook d1 and this pawn will be weak. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, white is uh, perfectly fine in this, in this position. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, dynamic exchanges. Uh, next time we will uh, continue to have a look at some more, uh, how can I say, uh, Curious examples on how we can use this technique of uh, swapping pieces and improve our pawn structure or ruin our opponent's pawn structure. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks to Chessable, to Chess Dojo, to USCS, of course, Greg Shahadi. Thanks and see you next time. Bye bye.